So um, what I'd like to do is, is, is actually drill down to an example of how we've taken open source and created a product that's innovative and that we we're bringing out to market. Um, as John was talking about open source and how Dell's new to the game, I felt like I'm the, the, we are the old guys in the block. We've been doing open source for about 10 years now. We started with a little project called Apache Geronimo a while back when we thought JBoss shouldn't be the only game in town and create another app server. Uh, we followed it up with uh, ActiveMQ. We started that at, at Apache as well. And thought IBM MQ series was getting too expensive and open source should do something in that. Uh, for some of you Java developers, we inflicted Apache Maven um, for those who are doing builds and was, was having a hard time dealing with that and, and wanted to have a good way to, to, to do and, and implement builds uh, in, in the environment. And a couple other things followed that, such as um, uh, the Jetty project that was a Java container and, and a few things going forward. What's really exciting for us now is the progression of open source, not just in the creation of open source technology, but how businesses has evolved and how ecosystems actually materialize around open source. And a great example of that is OpenStack. It was announced uh, about two years ago. It was actually uh, featured here last year with a few, a few startups um, like Nebula and Piston actually announcing a company around uh, OpenStack at OSCON last year. I would like to share with you flavor of, of how we've evolved that mentality, how we've taken open source and use it, and not just as a platform to create software that is low cost and meets expectations, but also software that actually binds a community together, an ecosystem of vendors, an ecosystem of vendors and service providers to you know, accelerate delivery of innovation down to the end users itself. So we talk about OpenStack, it actually started as a singular project. What's nice about OpenStack is it's not a monolithic project. Right? That, that the ability for people to influence OpenStack, contribute to OpenStack in the specific context that you care about within OpenStack is something that's possible, so it's parallelized from that perspective. So as a company, we started with a few other uh, open source cloud projects and, and now have started and firmly rooted in OpenStack and, and, and working towards it uh, very quickly. Um, What's exciting about OpenStack is, right, is, is it's anchoring a very important um, trend in the industry. As John has mentioned earlier, cloud has become the number one question every board, boardroom asks their CEOs, right? And cloud today is actually uh, dominated uh, starting with the commercially delivered software that has hit maturity level where people are beginning to be unhappy with it, both in price and flexibility where people think, I can do that myself, right? That's a good indicator of when open source is ready for market. It's about the same kind of environment we saw when J2E was getting way too expensive and hard to deal with, right? So some of you remember BEA um, and WebLogic and, and all those technologies, right? There was a point in time when the technology was significantly overbuilt relative to what people could do to consume it. And the complexity has gone so high that in order to use the technology that's supposed to drive innovation, it become very, prohibitive because it's expensive, the skill set requirement is, is there. So OpenStack tries to address that the, the particular concern, created a project where initially that will address the immediate technical gaps of delivering this in broad base, but also decided to go further, creating a foundation to shepherd the project, modularizing the project so you can parallelize innovation, right? and then making this really a fundamental ingredient for people who want to innovate further and deliver an end-to-end -end solution for cloud. So what we've, what we've done with it, so we started with OpenStack, uh, we've looked at uh, two other important ingredients in open source building blocks, one's the hypervisor, and we've coupled, at least from our implementation, KVM to OpenStack to deliver a, a solution that mimics an ESXi and a VMware stack. And then we took an approach that is actually an attribute of why OpenStack is great, right? We, looked at OpenStack having its own storage solution and we, and we looked and we analyzed that storage solution and, and vectored that to our market and realized that in our use for our particular product for a particular market, Nexenta is a better solution. Right? So we worked on Nexenta, we worked on the volume drivers and have productized it around Nexenta. The other aspect that was very interesting is that you know, when OpenStack was built, and it still is written primarily in Python. Now I have a lot of Ruby developers and we're big Ruby fans. Right, and we wanted to make sure that uh, to build the product, uh, one attribute that we want to focus is extreme end user usability. And from that standpoint, we wanted a UI that would adapt to every single workload that we can think of that would allow us to basically be extremely flexible in terms of how we present the product from an end user standpoint. So we thought, hey, we should do it in Ruby. Right, so with OpenStack, we've added 
and, and connected another open source project called FOG. And, and FOG really is, is the platform for us now to then scale OpenStax usability and UI framework beyond what's available at OpenStack. I don't know if any of you have installed OpenStack yet, but it's complex. Right? It's easy to install in a single node, single platform standpoint, but when you start thinking about OpenStack in the context of multiple nodes, multiple storage <coughs> platforms, in multiple different settings of network, in multiple ge geography, if you want to think about it, right? that becomes an immediate problem of OpenStack. It is very easy to try in and try and DevStack, but once you start thinking about OpenStack from a production standpoint, it is actually very complex. And we were very happy with uh, when we saw the Purple Bunny <coughs> instantiated a while back a year ago. And we've been working since uh, with uh, the Crowbar team to actually um, collaborate on um, finding ways so that OpenStack can, de can be deployed in, in as many possible scenarios as possible. And in our cases, our mission in life is to make the innovation coming out of OpenStack, the hypervisor, and Nexenta storage platform and make that deliver that as compact as possible to as many users as possible. The accessibility of the platform is really important for us and Crowbar allows us to do this in a industrialized manufacturing kind of way. And finally, the vendor that, that uh, we are, um, we only focus in the last 20%, the last mile of software. And throughout the 10 years that I've been building companies around open source, we've consistently described it as the best written 80% complete software. Right? And, and, and the value add that we have is really fish, finishing up the 20%. And while if you look at it from a code standpoint, it really is 20% or even less. But from a usability standpoint, it's almost like binary. Right? It's usable or it's not. And when an open source is made usable, then you get broad adoption. And we have broad adoption. That's when you really make open source a commercial engine, a foundation for a commercial company that to succeed. Now what's interesting about cloud and OpenStack is it's not a software problem only, it's actually a systems problem, right? If you wanna experience the benefit of higher flexibility and lower costs, right? You have to think and, and innovate beyond software, right? With cloud, you kinda need to deal with hardware, right? So if you have free software running on an architecture that looks like this, right? Where you, where you run your VMs on the blade, you connect those VMs in fiber, you run your virtual machines on a SAN and then have another SAN to have your data, right? Typical, classic, virtualization-oriented architecture today, all the value of software uh, being cheap goes away. All the benefit, potential benefit of skill set being lowered in terms of its barrier to adoption goes away. You're going to have to deal with fiber and SAN and multiple SAN and blades, right? So what's nice about cloud is you can innovate beyond that. So just forgetting that classic infrastructure for a moment, what open source has done in accelerating this innovation is also bringing that innovation down to hardware, right? When people started thinking, it's, it really doesn't make sense for me to run you know, virtual machines uh, outside of my frame, but I really have a problem with running virtual machines outside of my frame when I don't have IOPS in the sled itself, right? So a lot of the innovation can now be brought into that, and, and that's what we've done so far. Now, Tabling that aside, you're gonna talk a little bit more about how we collaborated with the other vendor. The other aspect of open source, this is a 20% that we do, is to actually look at open source and its open source ability to be made easy to use, right? And in particular, we've used a GPL-based open source product in the past that constrains our ability to innovate beyond it. And by constraining our ability to innovate beyond it, beyond what's available in open source, it really inhibits our way to make it extremely usable. Right, so one attribute that's it's really cool at OpenStack is it's, it's licensed liberally, that I can build technologies on top of it. And that's what really what enables us to make sure that open source that is delivered with the goal of making it low cost and flexible is also extremely usable. Right, so in, in this case, we've taken OpenStack, we've written a UI on top of it, we're able to realize that the return on investments of the UI that we're, we're putting on top of it, and meanwhile, still continuing to, to contribute to OpenStack. So in this particular example, Morph Labs spends a lot of money investing in UI and UX, right? But in order for us to do that, FOG needs to work. So we contribute effort freely into FOG to make sure that the assets is supported to it. Right? So this is what we mean by accessible innovation. It, it really drives down the value of what starts off as free and what you can make uh, usable in terms of going forward. I think the biggest value of thinking about open innovation is really what you can do collectively as an ecosystem 
when you're trying to think about the end user that's supposed to benefit from uh, collaborative innovation that is open source and bringing that to market. And since OpenStack was announced, uh, since we all got together about a year, year and a half ago, and going forward after October when we announced the OpenStack Foundation, what you're going to see is a consistent growth of the ecosystem that basically is focused on making sure that the innovation started at the developer community is really delivered down to the end users. So an example of that is the product that we've announced today called mCloud Helix. And if you look at it from its design, it takes that complex architecture down to a single slab, right? We've leveraged uh, all the knowledge that open compute has brought to the table that's made to, into a product by Dell in their hyperscale infrastructure, right? To really shrink the footprint of computing uh, to allow us to put SSDs next to compute modules so we don't have to use expensive fiber, so we don't have to use SAN just to run VMs. Right, it allows us to innovate so we can target the consumption of SSDs where we use SSDs that are you know, uh, less reliable but high performance just for reads and SSDs that are high performance uh, but low, low capacity for writes. Right? And it allows us to leverage that innovation in, into the market. It allows us to look at cloud computing completely differently. Very simple, small, modular footprint that can scale by multiplying more, more and more of it together. It also allows us to then look at classic conventions of how you run operations over VM, right? What's nice about OpenStack is it does give you, so the, the benefit and the, the, the complexity of OpenStack is it's so flexible, right? It allows you to do whatever you want with it. Problem with that is if you don't have a design in mind, you can get lost. You can deploy OpenStack in five different ways. But when you do have a design in mind and you collaborate with vendors that care about the market, right, you can come up with a platform that's small, platform that's market leading in price performance and power, platform that's adaptive and focused on workloads as opposed to plain infrastructure, and you can do that with partners. So in, you know, as, as in this example, uh, not only are we working together in the community with Dell and Accenta to build the software product, we're also working outside of the community um, as commercial partners uh, to then look at what we can do with these particular technologies into and deliver that into the customer's product. So that's kind of the, the experience we've had with open source so far. We're looking to extend this experience. We've increased this, the, the, our ecosystem to involve people that can actually deliver this even further. And we're very excited to be working with Media Temple coming up here. And Russ will talk more about Media Temple. Uh, and just even taking that step further down the chain, right? So uh, with OpenStack, it's software that you can put together and build whatever you want. With Helix, our product, it's contained in a box that you can buy and deploy. And taking that down the chain, if you just want Helix on demand or OpenStack in demand, you know, we're, we're signing up more partnerships into the, the ecosystem. Uh, companies like Media Temple, who Russ will talk more about, and then and, and continue to further down the chain of innovation. So with that, let me introduce Russ.